Welcome to TFH, the flourishing house. A visual Sunday school brought to you by the Next Generation Children's Church, the children's ministry of Gateway International Church. At the Next Generation Children's Church, we help children to genuinely encounter God and to live for Him wherever we are found. Remember, this month we began a new series saying, what are men? And we are learning from the Bible the different men that Jesus is known for. Last week, we studied about the name prophets. Today is another beautiful day to learn of God's word. And our topic is the counselor. Can I hear you say, Jesus is my counselor? Say it one more time. Jesus is my counselor. Yes, we want to know who a counselor is and the reason why Jesus was referred to as a counselor. We'll be looking at that in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Now, anyone whose duty is to give advice is known as a what? A counselor. Do you also know that allowing Jesus to be your Lord and Savior gives you the opportunity to counsel you? Well, we'll come back to that. I am anti-confidence and I am delighted to be your Bible facilitator for today. Please note, at TFH, we take you on six amazing quick sections, which involves the prayer, the Bible lesson, the memory verse, the craft section, our final thoughts, and then the blessing. So who is ready to begin with me? I get you ready. Before we go ahead, let's say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for a beautiful day like this. Lord, we ask as we learn through your word, you help us, you guide us, you direct us, you be our counselor. Father, help us to make decisions that are positive. Help us to go with friends that would give us godly advice. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Okay, it's our story time. Once upon a time, our story will be from the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 verse 8 which said Jesus gathered so many brethren and told them that everyone then who hears this word of him and all him will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock and you know what happened when it rained and the flood came and the wind blew but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears the same word of him and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the flood came and the wind blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. And when Jesus finished this saying, the crowd were astonished at his word. Yeah, that's our Bible story for today. What did you learn? Do you have something to say? Not to worry. We will talk about that later. But now, it's time for our memory verse. And our memory verse is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 9. And it says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder. And he will be called Wonderful and Counselor. Why is Jesus called a counselor? One, because he is wise. Two, 
he never misleads us. Three, he listens to us when we talk about our problem. And four, he has right words to address every situation. And number five, his advice to us is simple and clear terms that we understand what he is talking about. Six, he gives us a solution on every problem we encounter. Now, there are different ways we can seek counsel from Jesus. One, by giving our worries to him and allowing him to take care of us. And you can see that in the book of Psalms 52, verse 22. Two, he can also counsel you by making you know that not all your ideas are good. So you must always think before you act. He has good plans for you and he will never let you down. And three, you should listen to the instruction of your parents and other good adults. Four, to be wise, you need to listen to what Godly advice. Hallelujah. Jesus never lacks answer to your questions. He's not just a good counselor, but the best counselor ever. So go to him in prayers whenever you need his counsel. Hallelujah. Now it's time for our craft section. We'll be right back. Hello guys, welcome to our craft session. My name is Auntie Betty Michaels and I'll be taking us on our craft session today well as we know it's christmas season christmas is fast approaching and merry christmas in advance my friends yes this month we have an interesting theme for the month and it's super 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 amazing and the theme is what a name i'm pretty much sure that Auntie confidence has taken us through today's topic and in today's topic is he shall be called Ding, 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 a counselor. Yes, I know you know that. Amazing. Put your hands together for yourself. Great. So I'll be taking us through our craft session and trust me, it's going to be super, super amazing. You're going to learn something from it. Jesus as a counselor. Let's dive into the video for today and see who Jesus or what Jesus as a counselor means to us. <laughs> to the double T-L-E-S, Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about how Jesus is our counselor. So every time somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. When I don't know what to do, I know God will see me through. Life can bring us lots of questions. Questions like, what am I supposed to be when I grow up? Who am I supposed to pick as my friends? Why is the sky blue? How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll brand Tootsie Pop? When you don't know what to do, you can always ask God for wisdom. Jesus is our wise counselor. He will always give you wisdom when you're in a bind. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. When I don't know what to do, I know God will see me through. And that right there is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor, and I'm living for my savior. Skittles out. Merry Christmas, baby. Hi guys, it's now time for quick draw and Marie has provided an example drawing here. 
but we are going to try and do it without looking. And we all know how good that turns out. You know, some people have had their drawings included in the lesson because they've been so funny. Maybe you should send in your drawings and we'll see if they get included too. So here are the instructions. First of all, you need to get some cardboard, maybe a paper plate and put it on your head. I'm gonna put it facing down because that'll stay better on my head. Then you need a Sharpie, a marker, some kind of easy to draw pen. And here we have the instructions. Have you got your paper and your pen ready? Because here come the instructions. One, draw a heart. It occurs to me that you need to have thick paper or you might end up getting a heart drawn on your head. At the top of the heart, draw a hill. Whoops. That joins one side of the, of the heart to the other side. Now Marie said like a moon rising, but I don't want to think about moons and mooning at this point. Marie, stop the wind. <laughs> this is terrible. Then draw a triangle that touches the cleft, the top point of the two halves of the heart. It should be right under the moon. This is getting crazy. I don't even know what all this means. Then in the middle of the heart, draw two small circles or dots. At the bottom of the heart, draw two teardrop shapes at either side with the pointy end touching the heart. And now open your picture and turn it upside down. Of course. I can see what that's meant to be. Let me just open the picture to be, open Marie's sample to be sure. Aha, uh -huh. very similar. I must say, I am an artist, much like Picasso. Are you enjoying that? I'm sure yours is better. Please send in a picture to Marie so everyone laughs at you instead of me. Okay, it's now time for me to hand on to David. David, I'm passing on the cereal to you. Hello and welcome to the third annual Pewaukee Spelling Bee and Christmas Festival. I'm your judge, Judy. We're just a few weeks away from Christmas, so that's the focus of our Spelling Bee and all of our words have to do with Christmas. Let's get right to the Spelling Bee action and meet our final contestants. We have Ima De Gratis, Buster Busted, and Rex Honeycorn. Uh, actually, my name's pronounced Flaky Cakes. Flaky Cakes? Okay, we'll make that adjustment. Could you spell that, please? Um, can you give me the origin of the word, please? What? Okay, well, next up to the mic is Buster. Buster, it says here that you have gotten 100% on every test and quiz you have ever taken in your entire life on every subject ever in the universe? That is correct. That's impressive. How about a little test? I'm sure the audience would love that. Uh, sure thing. Uh, I'm not worried at all because uh, that's a true fact and it is not made up at all. Okay, here's a little Christmas trivia. How many golden rings are there in the 12 days of Christmas? Right. I'm going to answer that, but let me listen to my favorite song for some inspiration. Um, Buster, are you listening to the 12 days of Christmas? No, not at all. 
and a partridge in a pear tree. Okay, forget the trivia question. It's 17, by the way. Uh, 17 golden rings? It's not. 17? Please. It's a trick question. They were silver rings. Okay, Buster, let's just get to your word. Your word today is counselor. Counselor. Uh, counselor. Can you use that in a sentence? Sure thing. When the boy got in trouble for cheating, he was sent to the school's counselor. Uh-huh. Counselor. Counselor. Uh, counselor, did you get that? What? What was that? Uh, nothing. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to myself. What is that noise, Buster? Sounds like it's coming from your end. Count Chocula? No, it's counselor, not Count Chocula. What kind of spelling word would that be? Um, Buster, are you asking someone to spell the word for you? How dare you accuse me of cheating? Okay, well, you are disqualified from this round, and shame on you, whoever is on the radio. Sorry, it's five, by the way. Five golden rings? Oh, be quiet. Well, if Buster wouldn't have cheated, he could have asked for more information about his word, counselor, which is one of the many words used in the book of Isaiah to describe Jesus and the prophecy about his birth. Isaiah wrote, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You'll hear more about that word, Counselor, in your lesson today. But for now, we're going to go to a commercial break. Wait, wait, wait. Give me another chance. I can do it. I'll be honest this time. Okay, the word is counselor. Right, counselor. Let's see, uh, K? Okay, yeah, you're disqualified. And now we're gonna go to a commercial break. Last week, we started our series on Jesus Is. And of course, it's all about Christmas. We're learning about an important prophecy all about the day that Jesus would be born. It contains lots of words used to describe Jesus. And last time we heard about he is wonderful, but there was a second part to that which goes right with it. The next word Isaiah used to describe Jesus was counsellor. We're going to learn about how Jesus is a counsellor. Jesus can help us when we don't know what to do. He can guide us and help us do the right thing in any situation we face. That's what a counsellor does. But before we go any further, what I want us to do is to look at the third annual Peewalkie Christmas Spelling Bee. Let's have a look at what happened there. Write down Matthew chapter 2. This is where our Bible lesson comes from today. And it was not long after Jesus was born, a time where King Herod was the king of Judea, where many of the Jewish people lived. And by this time, he was very old and very sick, and he was not a very good king. Herod did not treat his people fairly. Well, one day, King Herod got a visit from three wise men who had come from a very long distance away. And the wise men arrived in Jerusalem and went straight to the palace of Herod. They asked him, where is the king of the Jews? We saw a star as it rose in the east and we've come to worship him. Well, King Herod was confused. After all, he was the king of the Jewish people. Who could these men be talking about? Herod asked some of his priests and philosophers and they gave him the answer. The new king these wise men are talking about was the Messiah, the one whom Isaiah had prophesied about, the one he had told them about. They were talking about Jesus. Well, King Herod was angry. He was not excited at all about the possibility of losing his throne to this new baby. So King Herod made a plan to get rid of Jesus. Well, Herod told the wise men, go 
to Bethlehem. Then come back and tell me where the new king is staying. I want to go and worship him also. The truth is, King Herod had no plans to worship Jesus. King Herod was just hoping the wise men would come and tell him exactly where he could find Jesus so he could send his soldiers to kill this newborn king of the Jews. I told you it was not very So nice. the wise men left King Herod and travelled until they arrived at the home where Jesus was staying in Bethlehem. And when they arrived, they presented beautiful gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh to Jesus. Then, before they left to return to Herod, God gave the wise men a dream. In the dream that God had given them, God told them to return home without telling King Herod where Jesus was staying. And when King Herod didn't see the wise men return, he was very angry. He ordered his soldiers to go to Bethlehem and kill every baby boy that was under the age of two. That was horrible. It was horrific. It was brutal. However, because of the dream God gave the wise men, Jesus was safe and sound away from King Herod and his soldiers. God knew they needed help, so he gave them wisdom. Even the wise men needed a wise counsellor. In your lesson today, you're going to learn how Jesus is a wise counsellor and he can help you in any situation as well. Hello everyone, come on in. Welcome to Pumpernickels. Good to see you. Hey kids, it's me, Happy. Happy Helperton, your favorite greeter at your local Pumpernickel store, where everything is just one nickel. Today I'm here to direct you to today's power verse, which is, The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Psalm 32, 8. Well, deck my halls, that power verse was great. Now, what I need is for all my girls to stand up to their feet and say the power verse with me on the count of three. Ready, girls? Here we go. One, two, three. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Psalm 32, 8. All right, now girls, you sit down and all my boys stand to their feet and say the power verse with me on three. Ready? One, two, three. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Psalm 32, 8. Great job, you can be seated. Now, as you can expect, as a greeter at Pumpernickel Store, people come up to me all the time needing advice. Like just the other day, someone said, Happy, I just bought my Yuletide skillet and I have no idea how to clean it. Which then I have to tell them, look, everybody knows you clean a Yuletide skillet with Yuletide. And it's clearly noted on aisle 15 signage right there. <laughs> but for me, I know that when I need advice, I go to the number one source, and that is Jesus Christ. He is my counselor. Now, I need everyone to stand to their feet, and let's say the power verse on the count of three. Ready, kids? One, two, three. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Psalm 32, 8. Great job, kids. You can all be seated. Well, Happy's got to go help the customers. So until next time, remember, during this season, don't make a fuss. Have a happy, happy, happy Christmas. Bye, kids. <laughs> I said a little earlier, a counsellor is somebody who guides you, who gives you a little bit of direction in choices that you need to make. Well, 
Jesus is our counsellor and he can help you during any situation you face. When you don't know what to do, Jesus can help you. Let's face it, life brings lots of questions. I don't know about you, but I've had times where I'm really not quite sure about which way I should go, as in what choice I should make. We have lots of questions and sometimes it can be frustrating because when we ask other people, they give us bad advice or no advice at all and say things like, good luck with that. Well, when life brings us lots of questions, we can go straight to God. He can help us even when no one else knows what to do because God knows all things. You can ask a lot of people for help, but only one knows all things. That's God because he created everything and he knows everything. He knows absolutely everything. In fact, the Bible says in Luke chapter 12, verse 7, and the very hairs on your head are all numbered. For some of us, that's a hard count. For others, it's not so hard. Wow, that means God not only knows all things, but God knows all all things about you. So when you don't know what to do, God knows. He knows about everything you're facing and he can help show you what to do. All you have to do is ask Jesus. He will give you wisdom. When you want something, what do you normally have to do? You can't just sit there and look at it. You normally have to ask for it, don't you? You don't go to the shop and just look at a product. You ask the person to get it for you or you take it to the counter, but you've got to ask for it, don't you? It's the same with Jesus. When you're trying to decide on something really tough, ask him. He is more than willing to help and share his wisdom. Our power verse says, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. All you have to do is ask. So ask him for wisdom so you know what to do. That is a wise choice. So when you've asked God for wisdom, make sure you follow that by listening. It's like when you go and ask for something at the shop. You go and ask and you wait for the person to bring it to you. Well, same with God. Don't just throw out a request and then not wait for an answer. Sometimes the answer comes in a still, small voice, a simple thought or a feeling inside that you are making the right choice, that you get a peace. So make sure when you've asked for something, you take the time to listen and he will give you wisdom. Guys, let's pray right now, asking God for wisdom in any situation that you've got happening in your world today. Heavenly Father, we know life is full of hard choices. We have to make hard decisions. Father, we just pray for anybody that needs help today that they will ask you for wisdom and you will speak. Let them feel your peace about the choices that they're making. Let them hear your still small voice. Father, we thank you that you help us and that you are our wonderful counsellor. You're there to guide us. And everybody said, Amen. Jesus is our wonderful counselor. Welcome back, guys. Yes, amazing, right? I know you caught something from today's video. So what did you learn? As for me, I learned that when I don't know what to do, I know God will see me through. Yeah, amazing. So when we don't know what to do in situations, we know that God is always there for us. Jesus, as a counselor, is going to guide us into the right path into what to do when we're confused when we're down jesus is always there to teach us to counsel us so let us know amazing yeah so i want you to know that in this christmas season jesus is always there to teach you when you're confused and many of us who want to do craft to um make make a, a christmas tree or an art or a card for our loved ones and then we don't know how to go about it jesus will teach you 
So friends, I want you to know that Jesus loves you always and is always there to guide you. He's always there whenever you need him. I want you to enjoy the best of God in this Christmas season. And like I said earlier, Merry Christmas in advance, my friends. And I will see you next time. I still remain Auntie Better Michaels. And hey, do not forget to subscribe and like and share our videos. See you. Bye-bye. Over to Auntie Confidence. Welcome back from the craft section. We are going to conclude today by letting you know that Jesus can help you solve every problem that is bothering you. Always ask for his advice before you do anything. Let's say this prayer together. Dear Lord Jesus, we pour out our heart to you. Help us to know what to do at each point in time to avoid spoiling the beautiful plans you have for us. Amen. Remember, always seek for God's direction and guidance before you make any step or decision. Remember, this is TFH, the flourishing house from the Next Generation Children's Church. On behalf of our lead pastor, I speak the blessing over you. You will be helped by God. The Lord will guide and do beautiful things in your life and family in Jesus' name. Amen. On behalf of all of us at the Next Generation Children Church and all Gateway International Church family, I need you to know that you are amazing and you are the best. See you next week. Bye-bye.